Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So, how often have you been told that manual shooting mode is the preferred shooting mode of professionals? Well, I am a professional and I don't shoot at man using manual mode. You know, each mode for your camera has a specific purpose and you really have to find one that's best suitable for you. So in this video, I will be discussing the mode that I use more often and why I use that. So this is probably in terms of hierarchy how I use the shooting modes in your camera. Basically I use aperture priority which is AP which is what you see in your camera which is A 90% of the time, shutter speed priority which is S about 5% of the time, manual mode which is M another 5% of the time and P I never use. Now the reason why I, used, I don't use P is because you lose full control of everything. But in order, for it to make, in order for us to make this one work, I want to go through three specific settings that I do inside my camera in order to make this more efficient, me shooting an aperture priority or shutter speed priority. The first one is you go into your menu system and you go to tab one and sub menu nine. There you will see ISO. So with ISO, you can actually have a choice of your maximum ISO and your minimum ISO. So I normally set mine to a maximum ISO of 25,600. You guys are gonna ask me why, because my camera can. But normally it would be safe for you to go at 12,800, but for me in those particular instances that I really need to do that, at least I know 25,600 is there. Which now works side and side with the second thing that I set inside my camera, which is my ISO auto minimum shutter speed. I set my shutter speed to 1 over 30 because this is how it works. Whenever you're an aperture priority, you dictate basically the aperture that you want. Then the camera goes to your shutter speed before, then the moment it hits that minimum that you've set, which is 1 over 30, that is the only time it will be touching your ISO. So that's the way it works. In shutter speed priority, it's the same thing. Shutter speed, then aperture, then ISO. So I set mine to 1 over 30 because I know 1 over 30 handheld with the in-body stabilization of my camera, which is the Sony a7R 3 or the Sony a7R 4 It's fantastic. And at the same time, if I need to just to stop motion, then that's the only time that I will be shooting at shutter speed priority. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. And last, so the first one is I make sure my ISO is set to the maximum ISO that I want. The second one is that I set my shutter speed to the minimum shutter speed that I want before it affects ISO. And then it's still in menu one, but this time in sub menu 11, you will see exposure compensation set. They have two options. It's effect, it, you could set it to ambient light and flash or just ambient light only. I set mine to ambient light only, which I will explain to you guys later. So why do I shoot aperture priority 90% of the time? Well, the thing that I love controlling is number one, just my aperture so that I can control my depth of field. I can control which one's gonna be in focus or if I want my background to be out of focus. So that's very, very important. And I said, as I said earlier, all I have to do is set my aperture, let's say for example, with this particular lens, this is a 24 to 70 f4. I can just set my aperture, let's say when I'm shooting group photos to 5.6 or eight, and I can just forget about it because my camera will be the one to adjust my shutter speed. And I forgot, my ISO is set to auto. So whenever I am shooting an aperture priority, my aperture is set to auto. That's the reason on why earlier we set it to a maximum ISO that it will go. But we also set my minimum shutter speed before my ISO is actually touched. So when I am shooting, let's say an aperture priority, I can set my shutter speed to either, either one over 30 or one over 60, one over 60 being safer, um, then the moment it hits one over 60, that's the only time your camera will increase your And that happens instantaneously. So you don't have to worry about anything anymore, which now goes to the second reason and why I like using aperture priority. It just makes things faster. What do I mean by making it faster? 
Like for example, here you could see now, I'm set an aperture priority, I'm focused on the light, my video light, and look, it automatically adjusts to the exposure of that video light. Then, with the magic of one particular dial, which we fixed again earlier, which is exposure compensation, it's right here on top for the Sony cameras. All I have to do is adjust my exposure compensation to make it brighter or darker. And with the help of Live View, as you can see now, I can just fix my exposure to how I want it to be. So I don't really have to worry about the, the, the exposure reading anymore because what I see is what I get. So let's say, for example, why does it make it faster? If I want to shoot this way, but I, then I want to make it brighter, all I have to do is click it. I don't have to touch anything and it just does that. And at the same time, if you're shooting, let's say, for example, with this setting already, and then all of a sudden something is happening there that you need to take because again, in weddings, it is pretty fast. I will have to do that and automatically my camera adjusts to it. If I were shooting in manual mode, there will be so many things that I would need to adjust in order for me to get that proper exposure. So it really does make you shoot faster and more efficiently. Third, technically you are in semi-manual mode because as I said earlier, we are on auto ISO and our shutter speed is controlled basically by, by the camera, but we can still control everything using my exposure compensation. So if I don't like what the camera is showing me, then I can control it by making my exposure compensation dial higher. I can put it in plus one or negative one, depending on the mood that I want to create with my image. Fourth, it gives you so much more time to focus on what actually matters, which is your composition, which is basically you don't have to think about what your camera is doing anymore because it's doing it for you, but you do control an element to it by the initial settings that you've already done, plus the fact that you get to input the aperture that you want. Now, the fifth one is it removes the error of forgetting. This one is so important because whenever you're shooting in manual mode, you have to set your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. So what happens, let's say, for example, you were shooting in a dark area and then you decide to boost up your ISO to 6400. Then you completely forgot that your ISO is 6400. Then you're shooting outdoor at ISO 6400. I've, you know, it may, be, it may seem trivial to some of you guys, but trust me, I've had so many photographers working for me that they would be shooting everything at ISO 6400, there was a time that one photographer even shot it at 25,600 because they were so bent on shooting on manual mode, trying to prove that they are professionals, they completely forgot their camera settings and that's what happened. That's why if I keep my, my settings at auto ISO, my shutter speed is controlled by my camera, I could control my aperture, it removes that error of or for, or forgetting, it removes that mistake. Okay. Now, if you guys are familiar with my, my body of work, you know that I love shooting with flash. So how does aperture priority help me whenever I'm shooting it with flash? Well, basically, all I have to do is set my ambient light exposure to how I want it, normally about one stop or 1.5 stops under, which I can put here in my exposure compensation. And as you can see now, I am actually about one stop under. Then all I have to do is turn on my flash and adjust my power all the time. Now, how does this work well? Well, if I am shooting outdoor, let's say for example, I'm shooting with this one, look at it. It will not allow me to shoot over one over 250 because that is the flash sync speed of my camera. That's why my, my trigger is actually overwriting my exposure saying that, hey, you're already at one over 250. You can't shoot over that. That's why it's essential that your flash units are equipped with high-speed sync. Look what happens if I, if I turn on my high-speed sync and I'm at f4, earlier you were seeing that it was stuck at one over 250. If I turn it on, all of a sudden I can go over one over 250. Just makes everything more efficient. Then now I can adjust my, my exposure the way I want to, or I can even make it darker and shoot at one over 2000 now. But, that is now the reason on why there are times that I would be shooting in shutter speed priority. Because 
when I want to be able to maximize the power of my flash because the downside of shooting in high speed sync is that you lose a bit of power, not just a bit, but a lot of power. There are times that I would shoot within my flash sync speed and let my camera dictate the aperture that it's gonna, that I will be shooting in. So by doing that, I press it at S. Again, I will turn off my high speed sync so now I'm limited to 1 over 250. My shutter speed, I will set at 250. There we go. 1 over 250, which is the maximum that I can go. You can see I can't even, it won't go over that. And I will let my aperture, uh, my camera, adjust my aperture accordingly. Therefore, making it easier for my flash to be able to overpower the sun. Those instances are when I shoot during the midday sun when I would be shooting at f11, 13, at times even 22, and I just really max out the power of my Photix Indra, which is 500 watts. So that is the only time that I actually shoot in shutter speed priority or when I need to stop motion. When I need to stop motion, even without my flash, I will be putting it, let's say, at over one over 500 if I can, just to be able to, to stop motion from happening or so that I don't get motion blur. Now. The only time I use manual mode is when I know my light will not change. That is when I am shooting in the studio, when I'm not using any ambient light and everything is controlled or everything is lit via my flash. So if everything is lit via my flash, I know nothing's going to change. So for purposes of really consistent images, I will just be putting it in manual mode, knowing that I will get consistent images all the time and I don't need to change my settings anymore. So in the end, that's so simple it is. But as I said earlier, it is really up to your personal preference. If you're a studio shooter, then I would assume that you would be shooting in manual mode most of the time. But since I am a portrait and wedding photographer and I like shooting outdoors, I shoot in aperture priority 90% of the time and 5%, another 5% maybe would be on shutter speed priority. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please do subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see some of my images, feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.